Donald Trump has joined Elon Musk in a live interview streamed on Musk's X platform, formerly Twitter. The interview was viewed or heard by many, many millions of voters, despite technical problems blocking some people and Musk blaming that on some sort of an attack. Trump spoke about the assassination attempt against him, describing how the turn of his head at that moment meant that the bullet took his ear rather than at his head, and he described that as a miracle. It hit me at an angle that was uh, far less destructive than any other angle. So that was the miracle. That was, yeah. for those people Split that second. don't believe in God, I think yeah, we got to all start thinking about that. You have to, uh, you know, I'm I'm a believer. Now I'm more of a believer, I think. And a lot of people have said that to me. A lot of great people have said that to me, actually. This comes as Vice President and Democrat candidate Kamala Harris is lauded by the media. She's been given star billing by Time magazine, even though she's dodging any media scrutiny. Her strategy is working with polls favouring her in the key swing states. As I put it to Kristen Tate, the race is looking good for Harris at the moment. Yes, well, that's because the media is successfully making this an election about personality and not policy. This is all about vibes and Kamala Harris being this new, exciting candidate, the first female of color, and a lot of voters are buying that. And unfortunately, Chris, Trump is not doing enough to make this election about policies. Every day he should be out there hammering Kamala Harris on what a disaster the country has been thrown into under her leadership with President Joe Biden. But sometimes Trump gets sucked into these, uh, you know, food fights, political food fights. And when he does things like saying, oh, Kamala Harris isn't really black and makes these kind of comments, some of them are pretty funny. But it does not help his case in terms of getting support amongst those moderate voters who are buying into a lot of the garbage being fed to them by the mainstream media about Kamala Harris being this inspiring figure, which she's not. Yeah, I think it's, uh, I think it's uh, totally predictable that she's going to get this honeymoon period from the media. People are going to be lauding her for all the reasons you say. Uh, but the critical thing is whether this lasts, whether this can last all the way through till November till the election or, will people, or whether people start to see through, through her. And, and critical, if people are going to see through her and talk about policies, is her being exposed to media scrutiny. But she's done no interviews since she's been declared as the nominee. And and have a listen to this exchange because she seems to be in no hurry to put herself under any scrutiny. There's been a lot of questions about when you're going to sit down for your first interview since being the nominee. I've, you have I've talked that? to my team. I want us to get an interview scheduled before the end of the month. This is amazing, Christian, that in your system you can be at this level and be in this contest and not be doing interviews. Well, why would she do interviews? It just presents unnecessary risk. She's in the perfect situation right now. She can kind of do the Joe Biden basement strategy. She can sit back and let the press do all the work for her. Why get out there and present a risk of embarrassing yourself in front of voters or saying something uh, kind of stupid? We all know Kamala is not a gifted speaker anyways. She's constantly mocked on the right for her word salads and saying these awkward things. And of course, the infamous cackling laugh. So if I were advising her, I'd be telling her to do the exact same thing. But yes, it's incredibly frustrating as Republicans. And that's, again, why Trump needs to be out there hammering her and Biden on the disaster that their administration has been on policy.